Hey guys, I'm piggybacking a little bit off of my last video where I talked about how you can help primates at home. Um, this specific video is because today is International Primate Awareness Day, um, and the goal of the day is to bring awareness to primates in captivity as well as the laws and the rights surrounding primates in captivity. And I'm not really going to talk about the laws or the rights, but I am going to talk a little bit about stereotypic behaviors that are seen in primates in captivity. So a stereotypic behavior is a ritualistic or repetitive movement, motion, posture uh, that you see typically in response to certain stimulus. Um, and stereotypic behaviors in stereotypy is typically um, referred to when we're talking about people with autism. Um, and you can see a lot of similarities in humans and in animals when we're looking at some of these behaviors. But what we found is that these behaviors are typically more complex when we reference humans. So um, some of the behaviors that we might see are whole body stereotypies. And these can be things like pacing, bouncing, rocking, flipping, and swinging. We have things like self-directed stereotypic behaviors, which are eye poking, finger sucking, which could be like thumb sucking, um, hair pulling, and self grasping. So sometimes you'll see animals just pull their hair out or they'll like hold themselves like this at self grasping. Um, you could see repetitive benign self-directed behaviors and that could be things like scratching, self-grooming, yawning, and body shaking. So these are behaviors that are repetitive, but they don't um, necessarily uh, hurt the animal. Um, and then we also have things like coprophagy, urophagy, and regurgitation. So that could be an animal eating its own feces or another feces, um, its own urine, or regurgitating, and oftentimes they will re-eat that as well. Um, so a couple of things that cause this that I think of, um, immediately are hand rearing and then a lack of a stimulating environment. So hand rearing is something that we've seen for decades in primates. Um, it's really common in chimpanzees in the seventies, um, when they were being used in medical research and behavioral research. Um, and actually a lot of what we found out comes from that research. Um, when you take an animal or specifically a non-human primate away from its social group or its mother at a very young age um, and you hand rear it either to be a human or to um, use in a medical setting, uh, typically this causes a lot of um, developmental, behavioral, developmental and behavioral issues. So a lack of understanding their species, they don't know how to communicate with their species, they don't know how to cope with uh, different stressors, um, and this is all causes to stereotypic behaviors that you may see. Um, oftentimes animals, especially when they're used for medical research, they were being used, they were being hand reared, um, but only enough to keep them alive and then they would keep them in um, cages isolated by themselves so they would have no interaction with other um, animals of their species um, except for the instance that maybe there was some in the same room but in different cages um, they kept them in all kinds of different groupings and things like that so um, that's one of the big ones and when they're raised as humans um, they learn how to be human so they pick up different traits uh, that they see within the human, but they never really learn how to be a human and they never really learn how to be a primate. So this can cause a lot of issues um, in animals kept as primates. And this is one of the biggest ones that you see in sanctuaries and zoos today because um, a lot of animals who are kept as pets, um, specifically um, chimpanzees, capuchins, marmosets, um, they exhibit a lot of stereotypic behaviors and they are often relinquished to sanctuaries and zoos um, where they have to then learn how to interact with their species in the best way they can. And sometimes they can learn how to interact with other species, but sometimes they're, um, 
their behavioral and their de developmental damage is so much, they don't ever really learn how to interact with a normal social group. Um, this is one of the reasons that reintroduction of primate species is so hard. It is possible in some species, but in a lot of the great apes, it's not something that we've been able to do successfully. Um, and then another reason that we see stereotypic behaviors is because um, their environment is lacking. They don't have enough stimulation to keep them engaged. So if you think about a human going into isolation, maybe it's quarantine, right? It's quarantine right now. A lot of us are at home by ourselves. We um, aren't interacting with our peers. Um, we don't have a lot of um, stimulation. We either aren't working, we can't go outside. Um, different factors that can play into our loneliness, our depression, our anxiety. Um, all of these things are things that we see in primates as well. So if you aren't able to be engaged with your environment, you're going to see an uptick in these stereotypic behaviors. Um, if you think about an animal in the wild, they're going to encounter other animals in the wild. They're going to encounter predators, prey. They have to hunt for their food. They have to make their nests at night. They have to patrol their territory. Um, so they have a lot on their to-do list throughout the day for the most part. Um, and they have to be very alert to make sure that they know what's going around, going on around them. Um, and when you take all of those environmental stimulators out of their life and you put them into an environment that doesn't have that, you're going to see them start to have this uptick in stereotypic behaviors. Um, so one thing that zoos and sanctuaries work really hard to do is to add enrichment and stimulation into these animals' lives so that they do have things to focus on and to um, engage in. Uh, and this isn't something that can always be done if an animal is kept as a pet. So pets are very expensive, um, but especially when you get into the non-human primates as pets, they are incredibly expensive. Not only is their vet care expensive, but keeping them engaged is really expensive. And if you are a human with a normal nine to five and you have a pet chimpanzee at your house, um, there's nine to five, that's a huge portion of the day where that animal isn't getting any stimulation from its social group. Um, and this can cause a lot of stereotypic behaviors. Um, so those are just a couple of the things. It's a very brief explanation of stereotypic behaviors, but it is I think a very telling one in that um, these reasons are big reasons on why keeping primates as pets is not a good idea because primates are very social. They need to interact with their peers. They need to really interact with their mother in order to learn how to communicate and be a normal primate. Um, and they also really need to have a social environment that has a lot of um, different stressors, different engaging factors. Um, and if you take a primate and you put it into a pet home, that's typically not something that can be facilitated for them. Um, and it's a big reason on why we have animals like chimpanzees in sanctuaries today. Um, there's also specific sanctuaries that take capuchins and lemurs and tamarins. Um, because people just cannot give them the lives that they need to thrive. And they're often given up because they start to exhibit a lot of behavioral issues, anger issues, um, and just like overall wreak havoc in their houses. Um, so if you guys have any questions about primates, make sure to leave your comments down below and I will try to get back to you. If you have any ideas on what you would like me to elaborate on, if you want me to elaborate more on this specific topic, I can definitely go into it. I just try to skim the surface in the best way that I can, and I'm hoping I didn't accidentally mess anything up. Um, but yeah, let me know um, down below. Thanks.